Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about yet another potential solution to the Fermi Paradox. Where is everybody? Why is it that we're not hearing any alien civilizations out there? Is everyone just hiding? And why is there no scientific evidence for the existence of anyone else except for us? Decades of SETI search, decades of observations, decades of listening to radio signals, and decades of very thorough investigations, but no evidence whatsoever. And one of the potential explanations to this is what's known as the Dark Forest Hypothesis. It used to be known as the Hostile Forest, but in 2007, the famous Chinese science fiction writer Xi Jin Liu expanded on this idea in his science fiction book The Dark Forest. The idea that makes some fundamental assumptions. First assumptions that, well, everyone wants to live. Everyone is trying to survive. But because we don't really know what everyone else wants, the safest option for anyone is to actually either destroy everyone else before they can do the same to you, or to avoid making any noise, including radio emissions, in order to stay as quiet as possible. And this is obviously not the first time this was proposed. As a matter of fact, this was even proposed in some of the other science fiction books, including the famous science fiction novel The Forge of God by Greg Bear, where he actually describes it really elegantly. He compares humanity to a crying baby. A crying baby lost in a hostile forest. There once was an infant lost in the woods, crying its heart out, wondering why no one answered, but drawing down the wolves. And humans, we've been sitting in our tree chirping like foolish birds for over a century now, wondering why no other birds answered. And the answer was simple, the galactic skies are full of hawks. Planets that don't know how to keep quiet get eaten. And that's of course the main premise behind the Dark Forest Hypothesis. From a more scientific perspective, it was actually described by David Brin, the American astronomer, back in 1983, with the potential argument being that previous civilizations might have faced extreme danger or even fatal danger when first contact occurred. And so maybe every civilization is just trying to keep quiet to avoid being destroyed. And to some extent, this is a special case of what's known as game theory. In this case, this would be an incomplete information game. A game where all of the players find themselves in the same situation of not having enough available information. But there's only one winning condition. You need to survive. And the only way for all civilizations to win this game, or for all players to win, is actually if they do absolutely nothing. If they make no noise, if they make no attempt to communicate, if they just try to live in complete and total silence. And so according to the game theory, it definitely makes sense. And it also might make sense from the historical or from the sociological perspective. Based on what we know about various empires on planet Earth, when they interacted with more complex or more dangerous empires, such as for example the Mayan Empire being destroyed by the Spanish. And so by using a kind of a similar analysis, the proponents of this hypothesis suggest that there are no radio signals and everyone is staying quiet because they're essentially afraid. Afraid of potentially aggressive, more advanced civilizations that might come for a visit. But because life tends to evolve everywhere and usually tries to get into every niche, finding a ways to survive, the only explanation here is that all complex life eventually becomes silent and paranoid. Or otherwise gets completely destroyed. But all of these assumptions are extremely biased. All of this is basically based on sociology, game theory, and of course human history. We're kind of making an assumption that all civilizations evolve the same, they end up having very similar values and very similar needs, and eventually develop things like religion, greed, prestige, and the need for expansion. Because those were the main values behind previous expansions into Americas, for example, and of course previous wars between various empires. And so, even though it might make sense here on planet Earth when it comes to the human race, any kind of intelligent life out there might be completely different. Which is actually one of the main premises behind H.P. Lovecraft's cosmic horror mythos, where creatures like Cthulhu were supposed to be completely incomprehensible to humans. And more importantly, their goals, their ideology, their religion was pretty much impossible for humans to comprehend. And so making the assumption that thousands if not millions of different civilizations out there are going to have exactly the same needs, same fears, and are going to progress and evolve exactly the same is maybe a little bit too simplistic. It's based on our own biases. And more importantly, even a single example where a civilization starts to violate these rules, broadcasting various radio messages across the entire galaxy, would statistically suggest that there would be at least a handful of different signals out there that we should be hearing either way. From these civilizations that are basically breaking the rules or are just a little bit too curious for their own good. 
Well, actually, kind of like us. At least nine different messages have already been sent in the last few decades, such as the famous Arecibo message, sent back in 1974, which means that we already broke these rules. And it also means that statistically, there will be many other civilizations similar to us doing the same, and so we should still be hearing something. Because even if there is a dark forest out there, we expect at least a few of these curious civilizations that would still try to call out to everyone. Okay, well maybe they do call out and this is what happens afterwards. Well, even that part is still quite unlikely. Why is this happening? Why exactly would another civilization come to destroy someone else? For example, in the Dark Forest Hypothesis, the proposition is because of resources, maybe because of some kind of a conquest, or some kind of a religious reason. Well, when it comes to religion, we're making a huge assumption that all civilizations out there are going to have religion or some kind of an ideological perspective similar to humans. That's a really, really big assumption and it's a huge bias. If this is more resource driven, it's actually quite unlikely that a civilization out there would have exactly the same needs as humans when it comes to resources. It's very unlikely that Earth is going to have the same resource benefit as their original planet. The elemental composition of every planet is extremely different. And if they're just looking to conquer new land, there are much easier ways to do this as well. In other words, there's also a major question of reasons. Why? And so a lot of these assumptions from the dark forest hypothesis are extremely biased in terms of human beings. Moreover, a lot of these ideas, such as staying quiet and not making any noise to survive, is something that's a little bit more biased in certain cultures, such as early communist cultures. During the early years of the communist China, you actually wanted to stay quiet in order to stay alive. Standing out, making noise, or being a troublemaker meant that you were very likely imprisoned or even worse. And that's of course something that Liu grew up in and something he understood pretty well. Which in my opinion is probably where his biases come from. His propositions are definitely interesting, but there are a lot of counter arguments to this idea as well. Even from the early empires that were not truly destroyed by the Spanish. Instead, like in many cases, there was a lot of transition, a lot of assimilation, and eventually a lot of trade and a lot of communication. And so for another species to go across the galaxy in order to basically eliminate someone, even from a human perspective, would not really make much sense. There might be some initial conflict, there might be even a war, but eventually there would be collaboration and cooperation. And that's actually an assumption based on sociology as well. Here we can assume that if aliens evolve like humans, they will eventually become altruistic and will want to collaborate. As a matter of fact, most of the modern research does suggest that human success really came from the ability to be altruistic and to collaborate, and not from competition and destruction. And so here we'd have to assume something similar about aliens as well. Not to mention that humans are also very curious, just like a lot of other animals on Earth, with curiosity often taking precedence over survival. And so many of these ideas from the Dark Forest Hypothesis are just a little bit too biased, but more importantly, extremely difficult to prove or disprove, making this hypothesis a little bit less scientific than a lot of other ones. Because it's basically impossible to prove if there is really someone out there just simply hiding not making any noise. There are just too many contradictions that would make this hypothesis a little bit more unlikely. But I guess as a side note and also as a kind of an interesting tidbit, this idea of dark forest has always been in the human psyche, in our minds. For example, even during the early age of exploration and during the age of sailing, there was often this phrase, hic sunt dracones, here be dragons, very often displayed on maps where there were regions that were unknown to us. And so humans have always had this fear of uncharted regions and the fear of the unknown. Although the actual phrase was here be lions, the only time that here be dragons was used, at least as far as I know, was on the Linux globe, currently located in the New York Public Library, that was created back in 1500s. But the other maps have always used here be lions, just to suggest potential danger, potential unknown. And that's kind of the similar idea here as well. Here be dragons, so stay quiet the Dark Forest Hypothesis. But following the age of exploration and having explored pretty much everything, first of all we know that there are no dragons out there, except for maybe Komodo dragons, and we've also discovered pretty much all the locations with lions, they only live in Africa. All of the other ones, from the Middle East for example, have been destroyed a long time ago. And so in that sense, I personally see the Dark Forest Hypothesis as a kind of a new manifestation of that fear of the unknown. And as we get to explore more of the universe, and as we get to observe more stars, this idea will probably become a lot less likely, with other explanations becoming more likely. 
and we'll talk about those explanations in some of the future videos, and you can actually find some of the previous explanations in the description below. The next part is probably going to be about something a little bit similar, the Bird-Surger hypothesis, and so if you'd like to learn more about that, make sure to subscribe. Thank you for watching, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye. Hic alieni erunt. Here be aliens.